Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Uh, before we begin, just some quick housekeeping. Please do keep yourselves on mute and, if possible, uh, kind of uh, drop your questions in the air, in the chat box. I think a bunch of you do have your mic on, so please do keep yourselves on mute. And uh, yeah, really excited to be here today. And thank you so much for spending your time with us on a Friday evening. Before we begin, I do want to say a quick thank you to Gloria. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time with us and teaching us how to build a winning press strategy, uh, especially for early stage entrepreneurs. This is going to be bringing a lot of value to all of us. Um, special thanks to Michelle and Flick, the entire community, uh, for backing this entire event. Uh, thank you so much again for all the work that you do in the space. Um, and all right, my slides, what happened? They just stopped on me. Okay, there you go. Uh, before we begin, uh, I did want to take a minute to talk to you about Products by Women. Products by Women is a diverse global community, um, and we are presented a little over uh, 70 plus countries with 8,000 plus members. Uh, we do offer skill based mentorship uh, and help women identify gaps in their skills and connect them to mentors job opportunities and trainings. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about us, um, you know, uh, our goals for this year really is to uplift uh, women-led ventures. So this event is a perfect example of that. We do host a bunch of other events similar to these. Uh, we do want to democratize education. So most of our events are on, actually all of our events are absolutely free. Uh, and we do want to make sure that this knowledge reaches as many people as possible. Uh, and the, the last thing is that we do, we are focused on re-engaging women who have been impacted by the COVID-19 crisis, especially now during COVID, um, there are over 2 million women who have lost their jobs. So yes, uh, you know, that, that's what we've been doing and we're really committed to do that. Um, here are a couple of uh, events that are coming up. We have an authentic roundtable. We have Michelle, we have Own Trail, we have uh, founders from, um, also we have uh, Liz, um, Parachute Media, Arjita. Uh, that's one thing that's coming up. It's gonna be super exciting. So do join us, uh, go to productsbywomen.com. Um, and uh, there's also steam together. Uh, it's, it's a week long dedicated to skill based workshops. There are going to be other workshops similar to this. Uh, so do check that out. And we also have our journal and publication where you can kind of read a bunch of uh, interesting things that a lot of uh, women in tech and product are writing about, including how to write the perfect uh, resume or cover letter. Um, what women are doing around the world. Uh, if you'd like to be featured or would like to write for us, just email us at info.productsbywomen.com. We also have a mentorship platform uh, where you can go ahead and book a call with people like Iris, um, who, is a, uh, who is an incoming product manager at Microsoft. Uh, and there are a bunch of other women in the early stage, mid stages and advanced stages and really willing to kind of give back. So do check that out as well. Lastly, these are some ways to connect with us. If you have any questions, feel free to kind of reach out to us at info at productsbywomen.com. And with that, I'd like to pass it on to um, Michelle. Michelle? Can you, cool, can you see my screen? Is this cool? Yes, yes, we can. <laughs> awesome, awesome. It's great to see you all here today. I, I can see a lot of Flick founders are here as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Flick is, we are a platform and community hub that connects female founders and leaders with students from across the world through meaningful apprenticeships. As we know, a ton of female founders are under-resourced, so female founders are able to get helping hands on their businesses and students are able to gain career relevant experience, skills, training, and mentorship under established female leaders. Since January of 2020, we have, we have facilitated over um, 1,900 apprenticeships for women and from 53 countries around the world and everything from you know marketing to business development to sales to software engineering and everything in between and so if you are signing up for your first flick membership and you want to check out a little bit more about flick definitely go to weareflick.com you can go to the founders page to understand what it means to be a founder or the students page is the apprentices page and understand what it means to be an apprentice and you can use the code products by women for 10 percent off your first membership 
Uh, beyond the apprenticeship portal, we're also launching this private discussion hub so that a lot of like-minded founders can connect with one another. We just launched our startups perks package today for female founders. So that's over $300,000 of startup perks and resources. If you are a Flick founder and this is news to you, you can check it out on the Founders Hub um, and you can sign up for the Flick and Built First partnership where, where you'll get thousands of dollars off of top vendors like Stripe, Airtable, um, Notion, and all of those other things that you probably all use already, but now you get 50% off, 30% off, whatever it is. Uh, we also bring in office hours with VCs and guest experts and you can um, connect with them one-on-one. -on -one. So we brought in this month and it's still going actually, the uh, early investors of Zoom, Clear Bank, Salesforce. Uh, his name is Yaz, he's from Emergence Capital and he's doing one-on-one -on -one office hours with our founders. Also one of the previous lead designers at Tesla and now she's an investor at Rebel One is also doing one-on-one -on -one office hours. Um, and also we have a startup lawyer who's doing a full AMA and has already talked about everything from shareholders agreements to uh, I think like mergers and acquisitions and everything in between. So you can ask her anything, I think today or the, she's gonna finish today or the end of this weekend. So really get your questions in now if you're able to. And of course, of course for students, we've been able to give a ton of career relevant experience, skills, training and mentorship. And a lot of our students have actually gone on to get jobs at Facebook, Apple, Amazon, McKinsey, Bain, BCG. And you can check out our blog too, to see how many of them have also started their own businesses. Cause it's, it's so amazing to see when students are like, I didn't know I could be a founder, but then worked with a female founder is like, oh my gosh, women can be founders and women can work in tech and AI and all these cool things. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're interested in joining our mission to advance women's economic participation and accelerate women-led ventures globally, check us out at weareflick.com and you can use products by women um, for 10% off your first membership with us. So I'm going to pass it off to Gloria now, super excited for her workshop. She's going to bring a ton of tangible skills to all of you. Um, and we'll come back for Q&A. So drop any questions that you might have uh, along the way and we will monitor the Q&A in the chat. Hey everyone, I'm Gloria. Thank you so much for being here. Namisha, I don't know if you wanted to do an intro or not. If not, I can just start. I think you're on mute. I said, oh, sorry about that. Um, I was gonna say that please go ahead and introduce yourself. I mean, I'm sure people would like to hear from you itself. But yes, for everyone who's here, Gloria is the PR guru. Uh, and if you're here uh, and you're an early stage startup founder, then you, you, you're at the right place. She's gonna teach you everything that you need to know today. Well, first of all, I just wanna say thank you so much for being here on a Friday. I wanna keep the energy high. We've had a long week. We've had like three snowstorms in New York City. I was rushing to get here, I almost fell on my face, not cute. And I was like, we got to get the energy up. So I'm going to talk fast. I have a lot to cover. I really believe in giving you the most amount of value in the shortest amount of time. So if you are agreeing with that, type in yes. It's going to be a lot. We're going to look at the anatomy of a winning pitch that made it from zero to fast company. I'm going to tell you about my failures. I'm going to give you hacks. We're going to cover like six hours worth of stuff in 15 minutes. And if we get a chance, we're going to do q and A. I'm sure you're going to have so many questions, but I am here for you. So Let's keep the energy high. I'm so excited. My intern, Emmy, is actually here as well. Hi, Emmy. She has been awesome. She's my outreach manager. And she will be, um, you know, obviously helping with the questions. But we're going to go fast. So whatever you're doing, come back to me. I'm going to share my screen with you. Give me a thumbs up if you can see it, if it looks good. All right. So we are here because... We want to know how to become an authority, right? Because I really believe in life, there's two things. There's sales and there's positioning. And the higher you position yourself, guess what? The less selling you have to do. I don't want to be in a place where I'm begging for people's attention, right? So the whole point of what I do is to get you so comfortable, so empowered that you know exactly how to position yourself so that you are getting emails back from a person that is so far out of reach because that is what I have been able to do. I don't care if you work for a company or if you don't work for a company, every single person wants to be in a position where opportunities are coming to them, right? Can I get a yes in the chat? So that is why we're here today. We are here because as an early stage company, we really need two things to survive. We just need eyeballs, right? We need people to know about us, but we also need credibility. And that is why 
press is so important because whereas marketing, you might get the traffic, you're not going to get that credibility. So how do you build that in the long term, right? Right now, all of the ways to do that, it costs a lot of money and takes a long time long time, right? You can do it with SEO, which can take a long time. You can pay a lot of money for that traffic. There's tons of ad agencies who are happy to take your money. And same thing with PR agencies, 20, 30 grand a month retainers with zero guarantees. So what, what is the solution, right? The solution is knowing how to get press, how to be featured on the New York Times, how to get your story in front of millions of people and just skip that whole thing because we don't wanna keep paying for ads. We have important information everyone needs to hear, right? We are experts. So that is what I'm gonna show you today. That is the only free and sustainable way to build traffic because with marketing, the moment you turn off that faucet, it runs dry. So PR is something that you need to learn how to do on your own because you don't want to keep paying someone else for it because journalists don't want to go like through a middle person. They want to talk to the expert, right? So why is landing organic press so important? Because content is king, but guess what? There is no kingdom without distribution and nothing gets your word out there more than being on Fast Company, New York Times, TechCrunch. That is going to allow you to get your stuff in front of so many more people. Right. So here's a little bit about me. Um, I came into PR with zero industry experience, but I have been able to help founders get 750 million views, all organic across four continents. Right. So that's hundreds of top tier features, full length video, um, you know, news, podcasts, what have you. And to this day, with zero ads, zero sponsor content, zero Pay, pay an influencer 300 bucks. Uh-uh, it's 2020, 2021, I'm not here for it, right? We can do it on my on our own. One thing you should know about me is that I don't have a single journalist on my cell phone. I didn't study journalism. I studied uh, politics. I was a US diplomat. So I had zero industry connections. So I just, whatever limiting myth you have sitting in your chair thinking, oh, you know, Gloria has, has like an in, she has an intro, I need to be a certain place. That is false. You do not need anyone to make an introduction for you to pitch. You do not need permission to pitch. So PR is a skill, right? The better you are at pitching, the better you become. There is no ready or introduction. You don't need to know a journalist to pitch. I don't even know a single person, to be honest, right? So what I like to say is I am really a failure champion. So when I left the diplomatic service, I was so depressed. I was in an awful relationship. I knew I wanted to work in PR, but nobody would hire me because people were like, well, have you worked for an agency? And it's like, well, I have not worked for an agency. So I had to start from cold calling, literally picking up the phone, dialing the operator of New York Times and working my way up and perfecting my elevator pitch thousands of times to the point where I have turned all of the lessons into a winning formula that I'm going to share with you today, right? This method, you're not going to hear anywhere else because I had to hack it on my own because I never worked at an agency and I do not have any journalist contacts to this day. So these are some of the places I am a coach at. You might be familiar with them and I've been on all the podcasts and, uh, Podcasts are great. And with the formula I'm going to show you today as well, you should be able to get into a podcast in the next 30 days. We should all be striving to get onto a podcast at least once or twice, at least, let's just say, at least let's just do two times in the next quarter. I think that is a good benchmark, right? So let's do it. I'm going to show you how you can do it. So you might be thinking, well, Gloria, we're not ready to pitch or we're in beta or we don't have a product or we're not whatever, right? That is literally the number one thing stopping you from where you want to go because I have worked exclusively with bootstrap founders without a website who are crowdfunding, who don't even have a LinkedIn. So I'm trying to say that like, if I can do it, you can do it too, right? This is why you need to stop thinking that you need to be ready to pitch, okay? This is someone I worked with, Tanisha. She's 26 years old. She was crowdfunding for a fitness studio during COVID. So not only was she not launched, she did not have a physical space. She did not have any investors. She didn't have a finished website. She didn't even have a product, but what she did have was experience. So we positioned her as a fitness industry expert, right? She was one of the only black trainers at Equinox. She had a lot to say about wellness and inclusion. And so what we did was position that and put it into a pitch to offer it up to top publications as three ways gyms and fitness can survive a pandemic. So what happened, right? We wrote her pitch in June. She reached out using the formula that I gave her and the media list. And she started to just DM journalists on Instagram. 
right? She got her first interview a month later, so she was in shape. And then by August, she turned that into 10 plus different publications. So if you look at the date here, it's August 5th, August 24th, August 17th, August 6th, July 22nd. And she still doesn't have a website. She still is not funded. She still doesn't have a finished product, right? But just because she was able to position herself properly, there is such a domino effect. And now her LinkedIn is off the chain. She has investor meetings. And guess what? Last month, she won a $25,000 grant from American Express. So, you know, I'm sure she's great and she has all the merits, but if I was on the grant committee, I'm probably going to Google your name. And if I don't see anything, I'm probably going to pick the person who has a point of view and who has been in industry magazines, right? So type in a yes if you agree with that. That is, the really, that is really the power of being featured. And this is why you got to start now, okay? So whatever you're doing, come back to me. This is important. So Kristen, she's a founder of Catch, which is a, like a insurance benefits for uh, freelancers. You can, you can look her up. She's on LinkedIn. So in August, uh, sorry, in October 2019, this was when I used to pitch for other people, um, I pitched her to The Guardian, right? Because that was the top tier thing that was writing about labor relations, about AB5 and you know classification of Uber drivers as independent contractors or not. I heard nothing back. And then two months later, December 17th, the lady from The Guardian, who is the chief labor reporter, responded. And she said, hey, I'm working on a story about freelancers and um, you know, AB5, because that was a big thing happening in California. Are you available to, to discuss? And I was like, oh my God, this is our chance, right? So she got on the phone. I got Kristen on the phone with Carrie. They had a great discussion, but she didn't run the story. And I was very upset because I was like, oh my God, like I lost her, like what the hell happened, right? I followed up in January. I followed up with her in Christmas. Nothing happened. I heard crickets, right? So, so then what happened, right? March happened. So that's three, four, five months later, she messages me. And at this point, I don't even work for them anymore, right? Because I don't sign long-term contracts. She's like, hey, I'm working on a story about coronavirus. I need someone to interview for this today. Now, I didn't work for them, but I really care about my clients. So I actually wrote back and then connected with them, even though I wasn't on a contract. And this is another reason why you should not go with a PR agency because they're probably not going to do this. Um, they own the relationships. And she got on the phone with them. And the very next day, she got on the front page of The Guardian, coronavirus forces companies like Uber and Lyft to reckon with workers' rights. Okay, that is 87 million views per month. And then she was cited in the Boston Globe. And then boom, another thing in the Boston Globe. So there's like so much catapult, there's so much effect of the dominoes. Like you never know when it's gonna happen, but you have to start pitching, right? January of this year, she was cited in Forbes, giving one of the, you know, one of the five predictions for early stage startups. Now she has a tiny startup. She's not backed by SoftBank. She doesn't have any fancy VC money, but she was chosen as one of the people from Forbes to give her predictions for entire startups. So imagine if you didn't pitch, imagine if I didn't pitch, what would happen, right? The moral of the story is very simple. The more you pitch, the luckier you get, but you have to start building those relationships right now right now, today, even if it's imperfect, right? So in order to land press and 10X your visibility, you really need two things. You need to know who's covering your industry, right? You need a media list of all the journalists, their social media, so you can build that organic relationship. You probably also wanna do research on the last article they wrote so you can give them a compliment. It's as easy as going in the DMs and saying, hey, I loved your coverage last year on this. They're gonna remember that, right? They're gonna remember that you gave them a compliment. And so that's one thing. The next thing you need is you need to have a newsworthy pitch, one that's not about check out my product, feature my product, my product, my product. It's got, it's got to bypass that because otherwise they're going to say, we have an entire ads department. They're happy to take your money. Why don't you run an ad? So in order to not run ads, you have to frame your pitch in a way that puts you as the expert and not as a founder. And, and so these are the really two things you need. You need to know who's covering you and you need to have a really newsworthy pitch. So this is the roadmap that we're going to cover. I, I warned you I was going to talk fast. <laughs> this is our roadmap, okay? We're going to talk about earned media versus marketing because there's so many different like pay-to-play things. So I just want to be crystal clear on what it is that I am focused on today. 
And then I'm going to reveal to you my CPR method. This is the secret code that I cracked from cold calling and cold emailing thousands of times, getting phone slammed in my face. I picked up on what worked and what doesn't. And now I teach this method to founders all around the world. And it actually even works for like um, internal company buy-in. You know, I had people like DMing me saying, you should teach this at, you know, the my, my company or whatever. So this works for cold emailing anyone because it's value driven. And then... I'm gonna show you the actual pitch example that I wrote that got a female founder who still was not launched yet into Fast Company. And I'm gonna give you an opportunity to jumpstart and then we're gonna do a live Q&A. So if you're down with all this, type in yes in the chat. It's Friday, let's keep this energy high. All right, so people ask me, Gloria, what's the difference between PR and marketing and all this stuff? And here is the example that I love to give, okay? Are you ready? So imagine a man and a woman are on a date, right? The man is bragging to his date about how he's handsome, he has a great family, he's smart, he's successful. That's marketing, right? But if the woman goes home and her most trustworthy childhood friend calls her up and says, you know that guy you were on a date with, he is such an incredible human being. I've seen him volunteering at the Children's Cancer Hospital. He always shows up on time. He is just such a great guy. You really, really need to play your cards right because he is a keeper. That is the power of PR. Right. And so that is why Bill Gates literally said, if I was down to my last dollar, I would spend it on PR. And if it's good enough for Bill Gates, it's good enough for me. So can I get a yes in the comments if you agree? <laughs> I can't even see the comments. I'm just going. So I hope I, I see there's like 50 comments. I'm hoping it's yes. All right. So from thousands of times that I've pitched, I started to notice a couple of things. This is a really important slide. Okay. I realized that the more I led the pitch with my company and my product and who it's for and when it's going to be out, the lower my chances were of getting into a top tier outlet. Okay, so are you with me? The more you lead with your product and who it's for and the ROI and all the case examples and why it's groundbreaking, the lower your chances are going to be to get into a top tier outlet. So I know it sounds counterintuitive because you're like product, 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 but I'm trying to tell you that like journalists, you're not selling to them. And so in order to not sell to them, you have to just get rid of your product and marketing speak and you need to present yourself as a person who has relevant insights. Right. I'm, I'm going to tell you what that means, but this is a mental gymnastics is that if your pitch is all about your product, it, it's already going down the wrong path. Right. So you need to do this mental gymnastics with me. And I'm going to show you exactly in a Google Doc the pitch that I wrote so that you can understand what I mean by this. But just know that if you want to get into like a Forbes or a fast company or an ABC that has a distribution of 30, 40, 50, 80 million views, you need to make sure that your pitch is relevant to 80 million people. And I'm sorry to say that, you know, your product marketing pitch is probably not relevant to 80 million people. So that's what we're going to work on today. Okay. So you might be saying, well, what does that mean, Gloria? How do I make a pitch newsworthy? Right. So here are some of the questions you can start asking yourself, right? What are the changes happening in your industry? Now, I don't care what industry you've, you're in. 2020 has changed everything for all of us right? There are insights, there are new behaviors, there are new implications, right? What are some of the things that you're seeing? What, what is the, how can you be 1% ahead of the game and tell people what's on the horizon? What's going to change, right? Where is it headed? Now, one simple way you can do this is by making a very simple prediction. I'm not saying to go on TV and say, you know, the earth is flat or whatever. I'm just saying like, I predict that this technology will be obsolete, or I predict that this will be the key determining factor for, you know, uh, women in this technology or, you know, female founders, whatever it is, right? That is your prediction. Think about how what you're doing is tying into anything seasonal. So if you are in um, fintech or if you are in um, you know, like a, a gig working, um, you know, insurance, maybe it's something around open enrollment, maybe it's something around tax season or SBA loans or whatever. Um, maybe it's something if you are in e commerce or retail or logistics, maybe it's something about seasonal hiring and seasonal shopping, right? Maybe it's about the, the trends for Valentine's Day or whatever that is. There is always a way to connect your pitch into something that is topical and newsworthy. Right. So, for example, I wrote a pitch for a female truck driver and she was making a, an app for driving safety. So imagine like the 1-800 how's my driving, but she wants to do it in an app. 
So the pitch we wrote for her was California was green lighting like these driverless delivery vehicles. So think about like Amazon. So that has huge implications for driver safety. So that was the pitch that we wrote for her was this is what's happening in California. This is going to be the future of, of, of traffic. This is three ways that I can help, right? Another way to think about it is, can you use a free, free 99, because I love free, a form, a, like a Google form to conduct a very simple survey because you are a conduit of so much information to your community, right? The journalist is not gonna be able to tap into whatever your community is. So if, can you conduct a very simple survey? So this is what I mean by that. So this is my client, Vincent. He was a career coach and uh, we started our business during COVID together. And he knew that there are so many career coaches out there. How was he going to cut through the noise? He knew he needed to get featured, right? So what I suggested to him was, can you use a simple survey and go on LinkedIn and say, hey, 50 bucks Starbucks gift card. Can you answer the survey if you graduated in 2008 or 2020? because those were the two years that people really had it really tough, right? And then he compared their attitudes about whether or not they were gonna get jobs or how optimistic they were. And he offered that up as original piece of data to the for, to Inc, to entrepreneur, to whatever. And he started to get all of this like conversations going, right? With TechCrunch. Next thing you know, he gets featured in Forbes. He's from Tennessee, he got, he got in the Tennessean. He got featured in Inc. And then he was keynoting at conferences and LinkedIn News actually allowed him to do a live stream on their platform, on LinkedIn, which is 3.4 million users. Next thing you know, he is the go-to expert on how to get hired during COVID. And this is a saturated market, y'all. There's a lot of people doing this, right? So that was what we were able to come up with, with, with just using a very simple survey because journalists are not going to have time to do that, right? Journalists are generalists. You can just be one step ahead. You are literally going to present yourself as the expert. So now he's hiring an entire team. When I worked with him, he was a one-man show. So um, this is all happening. This is all possible for you. So here we go here. This is like my code. This is like the $10,000 slide. This is my CPR pitching method, my trademark method that I came up with to help you cold pitch anyone. Okay. Are you ready for this? In order for your pitch to be really good and juicy, you want to have these three things in it. So I hope you're taking notes. C stands for credibility. You want to put in very simply why you are an authority to discuss this. I don't want you to go overboard with this. I don't want you to lead with your resume, your awards. It's just, it can be very simple, one sentence, I am a founder, boom, okay? Then you wanna talk about your point of view. So remember what I said about um, seasonality, regulatory trends, like doing a, you know, doing a survey. What is the unique perspective that you can offer from your data, from experience? Because remember, experts have point of views, right? You need to have, you need to take a stance on something. Otherwise, if you're like, oh, everything's cool, everything, like that's not an interesting news story. So have a point of view. And then you want to set the stage. Why does the story matter now? If I'm an editor and you're pitching a story and it has no relevance to 2021 or something that's happening, this is going to sound like a recycled pitch. So you want to make sure that the relevance piece by tying it to something that's happening in a Fortune 500 company, you know, maybe it's something that Amazon's doing, maybe it's something, you know, with whatever's happening in, in Congress, that is your relevance, right? Maybe if you're in skincare, it could be about like winter mask knee, right? People are wearing masks, we're having acne. Like, what do we do when we have to reconcile wearing masks? All of these things, that is what's gonna make your pitch super, super good. So take a screenshot of this, do whatever you need to do. We're going to go through this. This is my CPR method. You're not going to hear anywhere else. And it stands for credibility, point of view, and relevance. All right. So why does this work, right? It transforms your me, 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 me into a newsworthy angle. You're saying, hey, it's not me telling you this. It's all of these people, all of these people in my community that I'm hearing. I'm just a conduit information, right? This is not about me. This is about what so many people need to express. And so I'm just offering this up to you. So it's almost like you're passing on information, right? Because that's what journalists are. They're kind of like a megaphone in a way. So that that is the beauty of this method is that it positions you as a conduit of, an inf of information, not as a consultant, not as a founder. 
right? You are sharing insight on a topic people already care about. Maybe if it's like education, it's three ways, you know, Montessori edu education is especially suited for children with ADHD or something like that. I don't know, right? I like threes. That's how I write my pitches. But that is what I mean by sharing insight. You know, three ways for introverts to really, I don't know, like excel at remote work. I'm just thinking off the cuff now, you know, but this, this is just what I mean. So you want to make sure that your pitch is so empowered that you're saying, it's not me telling you this is, this is like golden information that I'm hearing from so many people. You need to get this out. Right. So I don't want you to write a pitch. That's like pitch. Can you accept this? Tell like, no, you're not asking. You are so empowered because you have such important information that you're like, how can you not cover this? Just let me know when is a good time. Let's hop on the phone. Boom. That is the energy. That is that is the place that I want you to be after after today. After you know. So try to lean into that energy. So now, I'm going to show you a sample pitch that I wrote for my client. She's pre-funded, um, and she has like a very simple like video interviewing app which is basically helping people like master interviews. And there's tons of these out there, right? She's not launched, she doesn't have investors. This is the pitch that I wrote for her when we did our session in the starter pack, right? This is actually in the starter pack and it got her into Fast Company. So if you're ready, I'm gonna show you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So when I write pitches, I like to have three different subject line options. I don't mean for you to send the journalist that I meant for you to A-B test it, right? I'm sure you all have like an email tracking software. Do not send an email unless you have that. And then you can test different subject lines. So I want to just like show you this pitch. And then I want you to type in the comments what your initial thoughts are about it. What surprises you about it? What have you noticed? So please type in the comments. Anything that strikes you, anything that you maybe don't agree with or how you would have written about it? Maybe something about the way I write it or the way I space it out. Okay. All right. Power of three. Yes. I like threes. I don't know why. Um, I also don't like, a, like lots of paragraphs. If you're like, if I open an email and it's just like so much text, it's just going to turn them off, right? Think about it this way. You are competing with $20,000 a month retainer PR agencies. How are you going to cut through the noise? You need to start with a really, really good subject line, right? So, so, this, is, so this, is this, this is a subject line. It tells them exactly where we are now, what, the, what is the problem, and how I'm going to give value, right? All right, so if, if there's no more comments, I'm gonna go back to my slide. I mean, there's there's so many more here that I wanna show you and all of them are in the PR starter pack, but this is just one that I wanna show you so you can see the CPR method in action. People have said, there's no intro. Okay, that's very good um, I, because they don't need an intro. They know you're pitching them. So why even write pitch? Why even ask, right? I don't even want you to be in that energy where you're begging and asking. So do whatever mantras you need to do and just know that you have such important information that they have to, they just have to distribute it because it's gonna help so many people. That is the energy that you need to be able to get featured onto a fast company without having to pay 60 grand for a PR agency. So that is, I hope that if it's one thing that you take with you is that you are ready and you, don't, you do not need permission to be able to pitch. You can pitch right now. This person still hasn't launched. This person's app still not even, it's still, I think a beta. I don't think you can even download it. All right, so, so this is my client, Anna. You can message her. She's great. She's also a woman founder in tech. And um, this is what we did for the CPR, right? Very simple, I am a thought leader. One thing you might notice is that when I write the CPR, it's almost like I flip it. 
So this is really the credibility part, right? This is really the relevance part, or sorry, this is really the point of view part, and this is the relevance right now. So it's almost like I inverse it, like re I reverse it when I, when I write it. So this uh, point of view was that because, the in because everyone's going virtual, there was a huge skills gap with people who are really good at tech and people who, who are not. So that creates an uneven playing field and the press loves things like that, right? Now, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Why do we care? Because literally virtual job interviews are the only way people are hiring. So if you can't get good at this, it just means you're gonna get lost in the dust. And that is why Anna, and I, we came up with the pitch, not about her interview app, not about how many people or why HR companies, why they need to use this, but it's solving an immediate problem for people right now. So here is the result of the CPR method, right? It got into Fast Company and Forbes. She gives, she gives me a little shout out. And you can actually Google, you can type in um, Anna or seven simple ways and you can read it. Um, I don't know which subject line ended up working. I, I, I'd have to ask Anna. But since then, she's been asked to speak at the biggest career conference, um, you know, for Inc. Editor in Chief. So the people who she wants to sell her product to, right? The HR people at Zoom, at Tesla, and Adobe. All of a sudden, she was on stage with them. So instead of writing an email like "Can you test my software?" Boom, she was a keynote speaker alongside of them. It's the difference between buying a ticket to the concert and being on stage. So. Let's just all just try to get on stage. Let's not even pay to be in a conference. I've never had to pay for a client to get in to speak. It's, it's all about like, they should be begging you because I know all of you have so much experience. You have overcome so much and you just got to share it with the world, right? That is really what the CPR method does. So her career is taking off. She's getting so many like things on LinkedIn. She has no problems now getting people to respond to her, right? And when you Google it, it automatically has that social proof. So it just takes that one Yes, it might be three months, it might be five months, but if you don't pitch, you, it's not gonna happen. You gotta put your name in the hat, right? Cause you never know when the journalist is gonna go back to the email, type in a keyword, and they're gonna need you to give that commentary. But you gotta do it and you can't depend on anyone else to do it because if you stop paying them, they might not relay the message, right? So if you agree with me, type in yes in the comments, right? So these are like, I have so many pitches that I wrote word for word um, in the PR starter pack. Um, and you, I actually go through line by line why I wrote them, right? So like Tanisha's pitches here, like Vincent's here, and you can see exactly why I wrote the pitches the way that I did. And you're gonna start to understand how I write, and then that way you're gonna be that much quicker. You're not gonna have to face as many rejections as I did, right? So people tell me all the time, you know, success begets success. Okay, fine, that's great. But I wanna tell you, and hopefully I have throughout this presentation that press only gets you more press, more keynotes, more partnerships, more influence. So how would you like to be at a place where you are sitting and people are asking you to speak? That is really the power of my methods of, of what I do. Like nothing, like this is what makes wakes me up in the morning, right? To be at a place where you're so confident in your message, you're not asking to be featured. It's just a matter of when, right? And I write my pitches with that exact energy. So here's a recap. To pitch to press, you need to have two things. You need to know who's gonna cover your story. And guess what? It's not editor in chief at fastcompany.com because they're doing their book tours, they're busy. It is the, it is the writer who covers your beat who, and you need to know exactly where they are on social media so you can follow up. You need to have a, a strategy, a winning formula of when to pitch, how to follow up, and I cover all of that. And you need to know how to write a pitch. Right, which I've shown you with this with the CPR method. But the more the more you see, the more you're going to be able to, to make it your own. Right. So here's basically what you need to land press and 10x your visibility. You need industry specific media lists. So I don't care if you're in AI, if you're in food, if you're in pet food, if you're in fashion, whatever. You need to know who are the top 1,000 editors and bloggers. And I'm talking real journalists, I'm not saying people who pay me $300, give me free merch. Uh, -uh. I'm saying people who are in the position to actually give you credibility, right? You need to have very detailed information about the last article they wrote, where they are, that is like your CRM. And then you need to have your newsworthy pitch. And I put all of that and everything that I've learned by hacking it my way into the PR starter pack, which is trademarked. I don't see anyone else doing PR this way because I think people just work for agencies and they just 
you know, that's just like the thing. So this is my way of disrupting PR by saying, fuck that. You can do it on your own. You don't need anyone to do that for you. So these are the two things that you need. You need to know who's covering your story and you need to know your press worthy pitch. So this is what's in the PR starter pack. I am so excited about this. The founders who have joined have already started to get interviews um, in February. I had a, a, some people just joined from my masterclass like you know two weeks ago. It has a database of 30,000 editors, their emails, the last article they wrote, their Twitter, their Quora, their Instagram, their Facebook, their LinkedIn, everything you need to be able to feel confident to do your own outreach and give them a simple compliment such as, hey, I love that article you wrote last spring. Our, like. I'm interested to know what you care about this season, right? That is a great way. That is a great way to build that relationship, right? I give you all of my winning pitch templates, right? You can see word for word why I wrote it the way I do. All of my PR roadmaps, I give you a LinkedIn training. This is what it has in it, right? It's got, if you make a physical product, I give you a gift guide editors list. So if you wanna get on a best products list, that's for you. I had someone making soaps in their garage, just like, little round white soaps. And she used this to this guide. She pitched it to all the people on the list and got into five gift guides within a month. Okay. Um, LinkedIn hacks, content ideas, top 1000 podcasts. I even give you a podcast pitching template where you can literally plug and play. And, and Emmy can attest to this. It's the exact template that I use that I have Emmy do for me and pitch that gets me onto at least two podcasts per month. So all of this is probably insane amount of value, but I'm not going to charge you that. Remember agencies are 10 grand a month and up. This is only three payments of 395, which is crazy. I have not had a single person tell me this is too expensive. In fact, every single person that has bought this has says, Gloria, you need to raise your prices. There's people out there selling video modules with no information, with no database for $3,000. <laughs> okay. But I'm so, so committed to keeping PR accessible that that's why I, I just, I, I don't want to raise it. I don't want to raise it at least not now, maybe soon, but because I love Namisha, because I love female founders, this is what I want to offer you. Okay that if you join, you will be invited to my VIP coaching call in March, right? Where we actually turn on our cameras and you're gonna ask me questions and we're gonna brainstorm and workshop what works, what doesn't. You're gonna hear from other founders what they're thinking and that is literally priceless, right? These group coaching calls, you get to network, you get to see what other people are working on. You get to ask questions like, should I pitch a podcast first? Or should I get in a gift guide? Um, what do I do with my media kit? How should I make my, all of these questions will answer it. This is my offer to you. If you join by Monday, you will get invited to this. Otherwise, I don't, I usually don't do this. This is not open. I don't, you know, to, to just anyone. I want to introduce you to my client, Sophia. She's 23 years old. She's a furniture designer. She has zero product, right? We position her as the expert in sustainable furniture. And she was able to use the PR starter pack and pitch to the people in the design media list and get onto all of these places. And now she's like hosting summits, right? So it just has everything you need. And look, PR is not about bragging rights, right? It's about you feeling 1000% confident in yourself that you're actually gonna do the outreach because a lot of times it's just mental, right? It's just like you getting out of your own way. So I have eliminated everything. I'm making it so easy and serving it up on a platter. All you have to do is say, I'm ready, Gloria. So my question to you is, what is that worth to you? How can I help you? What, what is getting in your way? Are you gonna make 2021 the year you stop you know, waiting and start? You know, I, I recently um, wrote a pitch for a master wine sommelier. I mean, she is the royal family's um, go-to wine expert. She's done wine tastings at Julia Child's home. And she was doing virtual wine tastings years ago, like years ago, right? But because of COVID, everyone's like, ooh, like virtual wine tasting, this is a new thing because she didn't pitch and she didn't say that she was the first one to do it. When you Google virtual wine tasting, her name doesn't come up. But she was literally the first to do this. She was the first to do virtual wine tastings like years ago. And because she didn't pitch, she felt not ready. When you Google virtual wine tasting and all of the things that are happening in wine, her name doesn't show up. So do not be like her, please. It, nothing, nothing pains me more. This is how you can find me. I hope you can join me. I would love for you to join me in my um, 
founders in March for my VIP coaching call and get to know you a little bit more um, and actually deep dive, right? And, and just really have a lot of fun. These calls are so, so, so substantive. I always do a mini training. I show you another pitch and then we actually do a deep dive into like what your goals are. I give you a worksheet. So you're tracking your 30, 60 and 90 day KPIs, but this is only available for the next 48 hours because I don't have a lot of spots. I have other people who are on this call that I've already committed to. So I don't have that many left. One thing I want to leave you with before we open up questions is I understand that it's hard. I understand the reason why PR agencies can charge 20 grand a month is because they know that people don't like to face rejection. It's so much easier to have someone else pitch for you. And that is why they just make so much money by offering zero guarantees. But if you can get over that, if you can say, you know, even if I get a, like a no, I'm going to use that as fuel and, and feedback. I encourage you to send out an email today with a typo. I encourage you to get to the point where you can get five rejections and not even blink an eye because that is gonna be what's necessary for you to really, really become that expert without having to pay tens of thousands of dollars. So whatever you do today, just start. Whether it's sending an email before you're ready and pressing that button, just train yourself because that is when miracles start to happen is when you push past that fear. That's how I've been able to build my business. When I first did this workshop, few like months ago, it was a hot mess. I was stuttering. My slides were effed up. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was sweating bullets, right? I've done this now 20, 30 times. If something fails, if, if I mess up, it's fine, right? Because I know my messaging now. So whatever you do, just start. This is how you can find me and join me on the call, prstarterpack.com. And um, thank you so much for being here. Follow me on Instagram and the floor is yours to answer, you know, ask me questions. I am here for you guys. Gloria, that was fire. <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, Michelle, come back. Um, but yeah. No, yeah, that was awesome. I love the energy. I love how you're just like, let's go from one thing to the next. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not going to lie. I'm very tired. I'm moving. So there's boxes everywhere. But I was like, these people are here on a Friday night. I got to give them what their time's worth, you know? So. And, on, and honestly, everything that you said, I, I, I know you can see the chat, but I kept on commenting like, agree, agree. We've literally done exactly these, uh, exactly what you said pretty much throughout how we did our press pitching. And at the very beginning, like we used awesome. to send long, we used to send like long essays of why we were the best company out there for female founders and nobody cared. The minute we did a survey, I know there was a question in the chat oh. about surveys. The minute we did a survey, we put out a data report, we got picked up by Forbes. Woo! <laughs> so, yes. Um, One of yeah, I, I, I wish I'd met you earlier. Uh, <laughs> but if, if you don't mind, I think somebody, want to ask you, Christine wanted to ask you, what is a good size for a survey to be relevant in the chat? Oh, you mean like, I don't, I don't think Vincent had many. I think he maybe had like 30 people, 30 or 40. Like, look, it's, it's not about you being a data scientist, it's you being one step ahead of the other person that's pitching. And that person is not gonna do that work. So as long as, so this, this is another thing is, I think the reason why we try to overstuff our pitch is because we have the scarcity mindset that if I don't keep over justifying and convincing the journalist is not going to say yes. Right. But that's just like a mindset thing, right? The less it actually takes more skill to deliver value in, in shorter sentences. So keep your pitch short. If you're overstuffing it, check in with yourself. Maybe there's something that you need to work out. Keep it short. Another thing is that the whole point of a pitch is not the story. Like the pitch is not gonna be the story. It's the journalist's editorial discretion to interview you and through the process of that conversation, they will write the story. That's why you're not paying them to write the story is because you're saying this is a trusted vetted person from New York Times. They are, they are a person that has a public trust, right? So the whole point of the pitch is just to get you to that first conversation, let's hop on a call. And then through that conversation, you're going to be able to tell them more stuff about your survey or your people or your, your stuff, but that is not the point. So just remember that, that the point of the pitch is just to get a phone call. That's it. Gloria, That's it. I mean, thank you so much. But, you know, I, I think we spoke about like a lot about what we should be doing, but I do want to talk about what are the top three things, the top five things, you know, one should completely avoid doing when, when we're talking about PR. Oh, I, oh my God, there's so many. And I have them all in the PR starter pack as well. In terms of subject lines, well, first of all, everybody right now should install a Google News Alert. So whatever industry you're in, install a Google News Alert. 
So that way you get pinged with all of the different things that are happening in your industry. And you can start to train your mind to think in terms of headlines. I think the reason why I'm so good at writing pitches is because I'm really not smart in like a technical way. And I'm kind of a generalist and I read a lot of news. So I can tell like what might be interesting and what's not because I take such a macro view. But as founders, you're so focused on your area that you that relevance piece is difficult. So install a Google News Alert. So go, like install Google News Alert and then install an email tracking device, which you might have. That way you can know if your emails are being open or not, right? Because a lot of times people are like, oh, the pitch is bad. And it's like, no, it just didn't literally get open. <laughs> like even my emails giving people free stuff, like they don't get open. It's just, you know, email yeah. these days. But that's why the PR starter pack has their LinkedIn, their Instagram, their Facebook, because I have in there the roadmap of when you should follow up after you send an email. It's not just an email. It's also connecting with them on other platforms, which is like such a low worry, like, you know, like casual thing where it's like, Hey, love your feed. You know, like, I mean, this is how you build an audience anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think Omara has a question. Feel free to, yeah, go ahead and ask your question. I, sorry, Omar is my daughter's name. I didn't know how to change my <laughs> the name on my thing. I'm like, my daughter has it on there. Um, I have a question. So I have um, a small business and you know, a lot of small businesses, especially with COVID, you know, we are either manufacturing products or we're, you know, just trying to navigate this new landscape for business, especially when it comes to um, mm -hmm. e-commerce and online. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us may not be able to, you know, be so hands-on with our own PR. Are there different programs that maybe your PR firm offers for smaller businesses because you know like 10,000 a month would be more for like a corporation yeah. um, or like the bigger businesses I know like there's so many businesses right now that could probably and it's probably lucrative for PR firms to have kind of a pathway for small businesses to find their niche in your company so what would be like what would be something of a resource for that well, I mean, everything that I do is for the solo entrepreneur or the small business who do not want to pay $10,000 a month. Okay. Um, so everything that I've built has, has taken out the admin stuff. So for example, if you have like an intern or a VA to send the emails for you, you have the pitch, you have the email list, you literally go down and you go into the database in the PR starter pack. If you're in e-commerce, you download the e-commerce list. I think I have four fashion lists. I have women's apparel, e-commerce, sustainable fashion, and fashion. And you have like 3000 editors and you can just literally browse in the column that says outlet, which one is mm -hmm. your top 50. You literally copy and paste it into your own. And then you start to have your intern just start adding those people on social media. I like that you said intern because I didn't think about that because I'm so like doing everything. So this is something that's very self-explanatory if you were to maybe hire a paid intern or something like that. And you could say, hey, guys, you can learn from this too. I mean, that's what Emmy does for me. She, I have all the stuff all the media lists for her and she just takes it and takes the pitch that I literally have in the PR starter pack. I have the, my podcast pitch template. You can literally take out my name and put in yours. It's the exact one that she uses to get me onto two podcasts per month. Okay. Thank I like, thank you so much for that. That was very simple <laughs> and easy. Okay. Thank you. I saw some, um, there, there are a few more questions in the chat that I, I saw come up a lot. Uh, Mary asks, any tips for choosing an angle when our company addresses several hot topics, i.e. mental health, diversity and inclusion and adapting during times of uncertainty and rapid change? I think a lot of people were asking about the why now topic. How can mm -hmm. they pick that why now topic? So that's going to take practice and time. That's why the Google News Alert is so important. And then inside the PR starter pack, I have an entire module where I explain all of my winning pitches and why I wrote it the way I do. And it's just a muscle, right? The more you write, the more you understand it, the more you're going to understand why something is relevant and something is not. And so you just have to see as many winning pitches as possible. But I say, if you can tie it to a seasonality, a regulatory angle and a Fortune 500 company, that's wonderful. So if you're in e-commerce, I wrote a pitch for someone who is like a 20 year old, like she makes bracelets at home and she got kicked off of Etsy because Etsy had these really predatory policies about how you have to do free shipping and how you have to have a 99.9% .9 customer satisfaction rate. And if you don't abide by these things, we're going to kick you off. Right? So she got kicked off and she literally, after I worked with her, she went into the media, the PR starter pack media list. And she started like sending, sending um, tweets out and she's, saw a person who wrote about Etsy um, and, and their policies like a few months ago, followed up with them. And that person writes for Vox. And, and, then, they, and then he interviewed her because he's like, oh, I'm 
perfectly poised to do a follow-up story now. So let me know about your experience on Etsy, right? Gloria, a, a bunch of people are asking you again to share that information about your starter pack. So if you can quickly share that information again and how someone can reach out to you, that'll be great. So it's right here. PR agencies are 10 grand a month. This is, this is less than like a 10th of that. <laughs> and, and you can literally access all media lists and keep them and just have them for life. So there's just, there's just no other person that's offering this. And, and I think having that, that proprietary media list is so, so important, you know? And um, I, 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 I always get told, Gloria, you need to increase your prices. Like I cannot believe it's so cheap, but um, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I wanna keep it accessible, so. So Jordan, there are, there's like over 60 different um, industries. So I do it by industry. So if you don't see your industry in the one of the 60, let me know and I will create a new one. Um, but I doubt that you'll be able to like not find, you know, something in, in 60 different industries. I just uploaded the music one and I just uploaded an art one. Oh, and then I, I also uploaded one about Christianity because I had someone who writes about Christianity. So that's awesome. So media lists have just been updated. They should last for at least a year. I don't think 30,000 people are going to change jobs. Um, so the beauty of having that much is that you're going to at least have them on social media as well. So it's not just, you know, their emails because that person might move around and like, you know, cover different things, but you have already made that relationship with them. So yes, yeah, so it has TV, it has podcasts, um, it has anything that is um, searchable online. So if it's searchable online, because we're all about SEO, then it's on here. If it's not searchable online, if it's like a print publication, you probably don't even wanna be in there anyway, so. Yeah, and I think we have time for one more question. And uh, after that, I promise all of this information is gonna be uploaded onto our YouTube channel. And you will hear from Gloria, she's gonna be reaching out to each one, uh, like all of you via email. Right, Gloria? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, your team is gonna- I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a gift uh, for attending. It's my beautiful roadmap that basically <laughs> goes in, into what I covered today, my three steps, the CPR methods. So you don't have to remember everything. I had, I paid a designer to make a beautiful guide for you, so. Awesome, so one more question. Iris, do you wanna quickly jump in and ask your question? Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Gloria. That was really amazing. Um, so my question is uh, for your point of view, um, having two podcasts per month, um, what is the benefit of that? Like I, I get interviewed by podcasts a lot as well. I mean, of course, not that as much as you do, but like, I think, um, how, how do you monetize after someone interviewing you on podcasts or like, what do you see as the main benefit for podcasts? Well, this is how you found me today is because Namisha, I pitched to Namisha and I actually got on her podcast. So this is the better, you're seeing it right here. Like it's like workshops, it's so many things. I have people who come to me and find my find me on the DMs because they heard me on a podcast six months ago. You know, it, it's just increasing the touch points that you have with people. So same thing that I'm doing with you, you're doing with, with journalists, with Facebook, with LinkedIn, with, I actually had people just like comment on a like top tier reporter at New York Times in the comments. And then they start, they go on a phone call because journalists have their guard down in LinkedIn, you know, on social media. They're used to being pitched to on email. But if you can know the last article they wrote, which is what I have in the PR starter pack, it's as easy as saying, hey, I love your coverage last year on this. Are you still covering the speed? I have a lot of information from X, Y, and Z, and I would love to send it to you. Boom. That's it. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's going to give you that confidence to pitch. That's why having that, that detailed information with 10 different columns is so, so important. There are like, it's like Prowley and other like PR um, companies that they charge like thousands of dollars per month and they don't even give you the emails. Like you have to send the emails through them apparently. And it's like very, um, it's, it's like PR at like condenas.com, which is not going to get read, <laughs> you know, so. For sure. Well, thank you. Gloria, thank you so much for your time and thank you everyone. I mean, the attendance rate is incredible and everybody stays <laughs> way to the end. I think what a way to end the week. Uh, and thank you again. And uh, we'll all stay in touch and feel free to drop your information in the chat box before everybody leaves. And uh, that's it from, from us. And we do have a lot of events coming up. So check us out at productsbywomen.com. Thank you all so much. Please connect with me on social media. And I hope to see some of you in March for the call. You'll get an invite after you purchase. And then I cannot wait to get to know you a little bit more. Thank you. Michelle, do you want to say bye? 
<laughs> yeah, they, I'm just so many people are direct messaging me right now. Thank you so much, everybody, for um, coming today. And if you want to reach me, you can feel free to uh, add me on LinkedIn or email me at michelle at weareflick.com. I know some of you had questions. Um, so sorry if I wasn't able to get to your message. But like I said, if you want to check out what it's like to be a Flick community founder, definitely check us out at weareflick.com slash founders. And you can use products by women for 10% off your first membership with us. We would love to introduce you to the community. And thank you so much for being here today and for Gloria um, for, for all these tangible tips that I definitely say they all work. So I'm sure her starter pack is going to get you far. Yep, it will. It's within some, some within a week, actually. So <laughs> thank you all so much. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye.